the cuffs I have are super cheapo cuffs. I, I feel like I want to invest in sort of nice ones, but the one thing they have on them is numbers. So I've got a sense of like on arms, I, you know, need to be between seven and eight and on legs between 11 and 12. Um, and sometimes I just overcook it. And after the first set, I have to loosen them if I have, any, if sure. I want to have any hope of completing the, the exercises. Um, and, and then going back to weight, 20 to 40% of one rep max is about the place you like people to be. Yeah, I generally prefer lower, uh, meaning around 20 or 30%. Okay. There are some people who creep up to 40. And so I, I just think that the real utility of using blood flow restriction is the fact that you can use it with very low loads. So I think that's the benefit. We have, we've tried to combine it with high loads in, in different aspects, and other people have run training studies with it, but it's not additive. Um, so it doesn't add anything more to uh, high load training. And it's probably because, you know, high load normal exercise is a maximal stimulus. So it's hard to maximize something that's probably already pretty much maximal in a given training session. So that's why I'm like, if, if you want to lift with heavy weights, then just do that. I, I think the utility of do, using blood flow restriction is with that you can use lower loads. Any um, playing with the speed? either concentrically or eccentrically? And does that matter? I think if you, the slower you go, the, the less repetitions you're obviously going to be able to do. I, I don't think that it probably matters overall too much, especially for growth. The, the pace that we typically use is about one second up, one second down, so a relatively quick pace. Uh, some people use a second and a half. So if you use a second to a second and a half, it's, it's usually a, a nice controlled movement um so uh, we haven't messed with too much in the lab but i i don't think it would matter too much i think it would i think it would alter how much work you were able to do and, and the load that you would be able to use more than anything and, and do you think that ultimately time under tension is all that's going to matter so if you do it slower but you get fewer reps it's still okay if you have the same time under tension yeah for the most part yeah i i think because when we think about a muscle growing, at least when I think about a muscle growing, where it, it requires a muscle to be activated for a sufficient duration of time for all those signaling pathways to be turned on. So from my perspective, there's a lot of different ways for that to occur. You know, you can use really, really heavy weights, you know, repeatedly, and that will do it. Or you can use low loads, or you can use very slow uh, pace as well. I think all of those are, are kind of doing the similar things. You're recruiting these more and more and more fibers, activating them um, and signaling them to grow. So yeah, I, I think it would be very similar. And then how much rest are you prescribing? Um, I, I did 30 seconds today. Sometimes I do like a super set where I'll do, you know, one muscle, another muscle, another muscle, and just go back and forth with two different muscles and not take an act or take a passive rest. Uh, what do you, what do you think about those approaches? Yeah, I, I think in general, we use about 30 seconds. That's the, the standard one that we use in our lab. I, I think when I've experimented in the gym, I think that supersetting works really well, especially if you are working out of muscle, that's not necessarily directly under blood flow restriction. So for example, the chest, you know, there is some idea that just doing a standard bench press exercise with blood flow restriction around the, around the arms would augment the size of the chest. There's, there's some data that indicates that. To me, I think a lot of that is driven by the fact that the muscles distal to the cuff, the triceps are fatiguing and the chest is picking up the load. So in the gym, I like to experiment with that. So. Do, a, do some chest and then superset with some tricep extensions or something like that. Um, but we haven't studied that in the lab, but that's, those are things that I've messed around with in the past. Well, it's interesting. You know, I, I've never thought to do something like a bench press with it, frankly, mostly out of fear. Is this, the, but I guess if you adjust the weight low enough, it shouldn't really be that much of an issue. Um, what about, um, is, is, I mean, once I did deadlifts, restricted 
And uh, I, don't, I wasn't sure if it was a great idea. I mean, I was, it was very lightweight. It was probably like 135 pounds. So it was not, you know, the type of weight I felt like I could ever hurt myself with. But I was like, okay, well, let's do 30 reps here of 135 pound deadlift under restriction. You know, truthfully, I thought it was pretty freaking cool. I, I think in the end, I didn't keep doing it because I was like, well, look, I don't want to develop bad habits deadlifting under such sure. fatigue. Is there, what's your thought on doing complex, uh, you know, multi-joint movements? There is data looking at bench press, squat, I, and they have seen some benefits. I, I generally agree with you. I think that you can do those assuming that you're using lightweight. I tend to prefer kind of isolation movements, especially if the goal is growth, but you could, you could do them. I, I think that you'd have varying success depending on the movement, the deadlift. I mean, if it's a Romanian type deadlift, maybe I could see that um, having maybe some sort of benefit, but I, I think I'd have a similar thought as you. It's like, am I going to change my mechanics? somehow and then put myself at risk and then really require blood flow restriction in order to train because I'm hurt. So yeah, you can do compounds that there's certainly evidence that suggests that it can help with the squat, help with the barbell bench press. Um, we tend to use isolation movements and for research purposes, obviously. Uh, but I, I tend to feel that a little bit better. Um, and I feel a little bit safer uh, doing those type of exercises. Well, let's talk about risks because I know that when people think about blood flow restriction, uh, I've had people ask me, you know, are you worried about rhabdo? Are you worried about nerve damage? Um, you know, are you basically what, what are the risks of this and, uh, what's, what's the safety profile? Sure. So I, I think that's a completely reasonable kind of response when you're telling people that, hey, I'm, I'm restricting blood flow and I, I think you should might consider it. I think the, the first response that I would hope a person would say is, um, what's the safety of that? Um, I think a couple things. One, it helps to understand that this is a very acute response. In other words, we're restricting blood flow for minutes, not for hours. So I think that that's important. I think the safety profile overall is comparable to that of high load exercise or traditional exercise. There are two concerns that people generally bring up. First is blood clotting. Second is muscle damage. In other words, does it increase the risk of blood clots? And does it increase the risk of muscle damage? And I think those are, the way I stated that is how it should probably be stated. So anytime we exercise, or anytime we wake up and live, as you know, there's a risk. There's always a risk for something to occur. In my mind, the question, the important question is, not is there a risk, but when we add blood flow restriction, does it increase the risk? And it doesn't appear to, at least at the group level in, in mostly healthy individuals. So it doesn't increase the risk of blood clots. And that has been looked at in some clinical populations as well, which is good. Um, it doesn't increase the risk of muscle damage. You will get sore, but when we look at the fiber, it appears to be intact. So it doesn't appear to be some structural damages at all. And, and have, have there been studies where they've measured CK levels? and contrasted them with and without restriction? And does there appear to be more breakdown at least measured by CK? No, generally when they look at most of those, there's not a whole lot of difference between the same exercise without blood flow restriction. Uh, there's certainly soreness that I feel confident about, uh, but, I, but, but not necessarily structural damage. Um, another one that's been kind of brought up is, you know, the blood pressure response to this exercise. So it's so true. proximal it, to the cuff is blood pressure going up centrally in the heart, the aorta, the brain. Yeah. And compared to the same exercise without it, it usually is higher. Um, but it's usually comparable to that, if not a little bit lower than high load exercise. So I think the, the key component of that is, of course, it's probably going to be higher. You're restricting blood flow. But how high does it get and how quickly does it return back to baseline? 
So I think that those are kind of two important components. Now, when we've compared it to high load exercise, it's usually pretty similar. Um, and it usually comes back down to baseline within five minutes. But those are healthy individuals. Now, uh, one of the, there was, a, there was a paper written on it suggesting that that's great, but there are certain populations where they may hyper respond to that. And, you know, I, I think that's a good point. So I, I do think that it might be something to consider, you know, if you have um, some sort of clinical ailment, you might want to, you know, if you might be hypersensitive to, to that reflex, that might be something to, to really think about. In myself, I would, when I think about doing unrestricted heavy movements, so, you know, five to eight reps of deadlifts or, you know, something where I'm really going for it, that feels like I have a much higher blood pressure than the blood pressure I feel like I'm under doing blood flow restriction, even though the, there's a much greater discomfort with the blood flow restriction. I never really get the feeling like my head's going to pop off my shoulders, which I commonly feel when I'm doing a heavy deadlift. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think that's, you know, a lot of the intramuscular pressure all over, you know, a, a systemic. Well, yeah, because I think when you're really lifting heavily, the intra abdominal pressure is what allows you to do it. And, you know, that's actually compressing the aorta. So it, it'd be interesting if you really think about where the pressure matters the most. Um, but I, I would say that overall, it does appear to be very safe. You know, that's something that we're, we've been interested in for a long time. I, I, I do think that, you know, as you, as with anything, when you give a, a, a drug in a large, you know, clinical trial, you start to see, you know, some side effects that you've never seen before. So my guess is, is that it, when it becomes more and more and more popular, we will find there will be certain rare events that we've never seen before. Uh, but I think in the actual studies that have been done, we, we see it to be overall relatively safe. It doesn't increase the risk, at least, assuming it's done appropriately. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.